Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News, a weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. That being said, real quick before we get into it, I just want to remind everyone that I am now uploading these in both video form here as well as audio form to anchor.fm so that they can be found on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. With that, not all of them have been approved yet. There are five different podcasting platforms that this is available on now and I will be uploading my previous live streams and talks. Talking BMX episodes there as well over time. So if you want to have an audio only version of this, head over to anchor.fm, follow that, do whatever you got to do. I don't know anything about that stuff. But that being said, let's get right on into the video with the first thing, as always, title and thumbnail of the video. And of course, the title is major clickbait with this one. I'm sorry, but I got you here. The first thing I want to talk about is the new unclicked podcast from Our BMX and Dennis Anderson with Ryan Nyquist. This one, he talks so much about so many different topics in BMX throughout his years in involvement, as well as the fact that Ryan Nyquist is the head coach for both men and women of Team USA in freestyle BMX. They talked a lot about that. Then they also talked a lot about things in relation to BMX and the Olympics that aren't publicly known. For instance, the impact that Ryan Nyquist may have had on freestyle BMX, even being in the Olympics in general. The story he told around that is pretty amazing to listen to, just in the coincidence and serendipitous nature of it. Another example is showing how serious Ryan Nyquist is about BMX being in the Olympics and just how hard he is trying to make sure that BMX is properly represented in the Olympics, in the influence he's trying to have on who is actually taking part in being coaches for other countries and just trying to guide them along the right path with his experience so that BMX can be the BMX we know, at least contest wise in the Olympics. And it's just admirable and really awesome to listen to. They also talk about Mira a lot because Ryan Nyquist and Mira had a very, very close relationship. They talked a lot about all of this and different stories were brought up and it was just really cool to hear hear about from someone who was so close to Dave Mira. Then of course they talked about paychecks and contracts and crazy stories of Ryan Nyquist being at a contest and then his agent or manager, whoever it was, calling him over and saying, hey, sign this real quick, slap a sticker on his helmet during practice. And then he gets paid like crazy amounts of money and he, they talk about that. And I just really thought it was cool because these are the kinds of things that have been taboo to talk about in BMX for so long and people shied away from it. And you've got Ryan Fudger and Dennis Anderson kind of like goading it out of Nyquist. And then he's just an open book, honestly. And the coolest part about all of that in the whole money conversation was when Nyquist said like, you guys were asking me about the highest contract and all of that stuff. He's like, I don't even know. He was just trying to ride his bike through all of it. And he did all of it just so he could ride his bike. And I thought it was really, really cool to hear that from someone so prolific in BMX as Ryan Nyquist. They also talked about the blue goatee and dyeing it and all that stuff, but you guys are just gonna have to listen to this one. It is probably the best BMX podcast I think I've ever listened to, honestly. So definitely check that one out at the link in the description down below. And the next thing I wanted to highlight this week is Dylan Stark's Real Heat 2021 video. This is a combination of MTB and BMX. And I feel like there's no coincidence that it dropped the same week or very close to X Games Real MTB videos. This video is nuts. Dylan Stark, if you didn't know, somehow is a madman. He has done so many insane things on his BMX that we know about and then the MTB side that some of you may know about but a lot of you probably don't. The last clip in here is probably, he almost lands flat. So we just say to almost flat, probably one of the biggest drops I feel like I've ever seen, maybe anyone's ever done. It is nuts. It's nine minutes long or over nine minutes long and it is worth every single second to watch this thing. And I hope that this video being dropped around this time, hopefully subtly hinting at the fact that he would like to participate in an X Games Real MTV video contest helps him make his way there eventually because with riding like this, just for the sake of doing it for whatever his personal reasons are, you can only imagine what he would do if he was pushing it 
for a contest that he was trying to win. On that note, the next thing I want to highlight this week is the Breakless TV 420 Trail Jam that happened. It was a thousand dollar cash jam at the trails. So check that one out for some trails. And then we get into some videos that I wanted to talk about this week. The first one is over 20 minutes from BSD and Dan Paley, and it's his VX rated extras video. This one is worth it alone just for seeing the behind the scenes and attempts at that gigantic 360 that he did from other angles than what were shown in the actual video. That 360 is crazy. You just have to see it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch his VX rated part or just go here and watch this one and see the insanity of it. And I think videos like this from people like Dan Paley who have incredible video sections with giant burly tricks and technical tricks that are completely insane like that manual to down whip that he did things like that seeing the behind the scenes behind them and seeing what actually goes into them kind of humanizes people and shows in a kind of relatable way i guess how difficult and gnarly some of these things are as well as just how gnarly these people are in general for sending them you can see their mindsets kind of get an idea of what's going on in the moment more than just seeing trick after trick after trick and you just have more time to take things in and i just enjoy videos like this so definitely check that one out as well and then there was something that popped up while i was recording this that i want to throw in right after dan paley's video it's another behind the scenes video that's like 20 minutes long but this one is from gt with tate roskelly and it's called wait what can go wrong and it's a behind the scenes look at his wait what video that just recently came out and blew up the bmx world with how insane it was if you missed it also i did a podcast live stream with tate talking about this video and a lot of things behind it for example the whole nine club thing and how he was featured on the nine club podcast check that out if you haven't yet i'll link it down below as well but it's really cool to see these behind the scenes things, especially for something like what Tate does, because we see this video and no exaggerating, it's possible that thousands or at the very least hundreds, close to thousands of attempts went into all of the things that he did in here combined. And I would not be surprised if that attempt number went over a thousand for this video and all of the different things in it. And we've got a video called Paraza and BCN. This is Kevin Peraza and his brothers riding in Barcelona for just under five minutes. And you know, with how good Kevin Peraza is and how good his brothers are, that this one brings the heat. So check that one out if you want to. After that, I wanted to bring up the Lux BMX game of bike video between Alex Heim and Clint Miller. Two superpower names in regards to tech BMX, and they're riding a backyard mini ramp with a little spine, extended spine, I don't, Spox, I guess you would call it, in the middle with an extension on one side and a quarter to sub on the other side. Clint Miller and Alex Heim going at it in a game of bike was super entertaining to watch. The announcing was great in the video. It was short. It was kind of just a really great and well done video for what it was. And I enjoyed watching it. I thought you guys might enjoy it as well, as well as clicking around and finding some of the other games of bike that are going on too and staying tuned for the future ones. And then we've got Dakota Brat's Spring 21 video from Edgeworks BMX. And I'm just curious for anyone watching this, if there's anyone out there who remembers the gigantic truck driver over the fence out of the skate park that Dakota Brad did. That is who I knew that kid as for the longest time and it's cool to see that he's still out there killing it even though that was like seven years ago according to his YouTube video. And it's cool to see and I was curious if anyone else remembered that. Then we've got Andrew Schubert's spyglass video part with a thumbnail like that one and a trick like that. You're going to want to check it out. Followed by Vans Mash Transition, which is a transition only video from Vans for anyone who might enjoy that one. Then we've got Pals Etc, a Denver centric angles tangent from Scott Marceau as a promo for his angles DVD that he will be releasing sometime. I'm not sure exactly when yet. And we've got some product related things to talk about. First, we've got Matt Ray's signature Sabrosa MR2 frame intro, changing a couple things up from the MR1. It says, we added to the stand over height and changed it from 8.75 to 9 to make the bike a little more stable. The bottom bracket height was raised a little for extra pop. We also increased the length of the dropout slot to make the frame compatible with more gear ratios. And it also makes it easier to remove the rear wheel during repairs. 
Then it says, lastly, to go with Matt's love for his Toyota truck, we paid tribute to the classic colors and striping. This bike is built the same way and designed to ride all terrains just like Matt. Pretty cool, and you can check out more and more pictures of it in the link in the description down below. After that, we've got a video from our BMX at the Profile Racing Factory showing how a BMX stem is made with Profile's product designer, Corey Alley, taking us through every step of the process of how a BMX stem is made with a Profile push stem, showing us all of the different steps of the process and showing the parts and how they look in these different steps of the process. It's a really cool video to check out, and it's really not that long at five minutes. And it's 15 seconds then we've got a couple interview things to talk about first we've got mike spinner discusses bmx's first ever 1080 this is an interview with kyle carlson from vital bmx it's a video interview and it's like 30 minutes long talking about that and probably more i haven't had a chance to check it out yet but anytime i've ever heard mike spinner talking about bmx it's been something that i've enjoyed listening to so i definitely wanted to include it in this week's news then we've got another interview from vital bmx this is a simple session interview and the title of this interview is that simple session is set for august 2021 return and there's questions in here saying congratulations on getting the ball rolling how difficult was it setting everything up during the pandemic are things getting back to normal in talon then with the assumption that this is going to look a lot different than simple sessions of the past he asked for a rundown of what to expect for the event and a few more things in there so check that one out if you're interested in simple session 2021 that is going down which is really awesome to see. We all know how big of a contest Simple Session is and to see that it's coming back for 2021, even though we already passed when it would normally happen in its normal place, is really, really awesome. So on that note, let me know if you guys have any thoughts on the Unclicked Ryan Nyquist podcast. There's so much covered in there. And I also forgot to mention, they're going to be doing another one. Hopefully, they were supposed to record it the Sunday after they recorded that one. So hopefully that'll be out soon. And if you have any thoughts on anything else I talked about today, let me know in the comments down below. And hopefully, if you're new here or you haven't yet, you enjoyed the video enough to hit the subscribe button while you're down there. And that'll mean we'll see you tomorrow for another one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.